So just a little introduction to the Common Core Standards. We do have two main sections, mm -hmm. the Mathematics section right. and the English Language Arts section. And we'll be talking a little bit more in this episode about the English Language Arts, but we really do need to make sure that um, all teachers are paying attention to both sections because now more than ever, we're all going to be required to teach math and language skills in uh, the subject area that we teach, no matter what that is. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that you will notice is the college and career readiness standards. Right. And um, they say they're really not standards. Jody, what, what, what would you say? Are they more like a strategy? Well, I think that they really are a strategy, and that really leads us to the next slide that's going to be coming up for, for our folks to see. And so as we look at those, we're thinking about precision and accuracy and problem formulation, communication, interpretation and research. And the image that um, we've pre provided for you to kind of help this information stick just a little bit better is if you think about your youngest learner um, attempting to st start crossing the bridge and um, their whole, the whole idea is to get across to the other side, of course, but as you think about your youngest learner, we want these core strategies that are called the cognitive strategies to be embedded in those children at a early age at, for our youngest learner. So as they cross the bridge and they end up on the other side, we have students that are college and career ready and they have been um, they have been instructed with the cognitive strategies that they need, not just in math or English language arts, mm -hmm. but throughout the core, including social studies and science. So those, those things are going to be very relevant for teachers mm -hmm. in their instructional practices. So we're all going to build those bridges. It's Absolutely. Not, it's not just the what we're delivering, but it's the how we get from point A to point B. And so that kids graduate knowing how to approach things and not just how to fill out a worksheet. Right. We want to make sure that they're successful by the time they get to the other side of that bridge. The next thing I want to um, include with you is, um, of course, we talked about the cognitive strategies that are just in general mm -hmm. um, cognitive strategies, but there are also cognitive strategies that we need to really know and address for mathematics. And on the next slide that we've provided for you is an image, again, to help us remember that um, as you provide instruction for students, for example, if you provided them with um, the opportunity to build a structural foundation out of cards, um, we have to recognize the fact that there's multiple strategies that are going to be involved um, when we think about providing instruction for mathematics. One of them is making sense of um, the problem. So they're going to be problem solvers, but they've got to make sense of it. So when they put those cards together, they've got to figure out how and what that's going to look like. So they're problem solving. Um, they've got to be able to reason abstractly and quantitatively with this activity as well. As they go through this activity, they're going to construct viable arguments and they're going to have to reason with others. So if it's a team effort and I'm working with you, we've got to come together and agree upon things mm -hmm. and also um, be able to reason and offer each other's understandings. Right. Um, and finally, we've got to also model with mathematics. So I might provide a model, but they might be models for each other as well. And there's a few more I want to add. Um, using appropriate tools strategically, there's always a time and a place for the specific tools, so teachers need to be very purposeful in that. Attending to precision, we want to attend to precision in, in accuracy there. Um, looking and making use of the structure, well, those are, when we think about reflection, how, how might we use this and how might we um, make sense of this structure? Mm -hmm. So really starting to use reflective practices here. And then finally, and, and most importantly, looking for and expressing the regularity and repeated reasoning. So after I've done this activity, how might I reflect and look at it differently mm -hmm. another time with maybe a different activity? but mm -hmm. be able to think back and using some of those cognitive skills that I used for mathematics with that activity, how might I be able to use those same cognitive strategies but only put them and plug them into another place. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a look at the English language arts cognitive strategies. They look a little different, don't they? They do look a little different, but they're still just as important as far as um, working our way through the curriculum in any content area, really. Um, and as we go through these, I think maybe a good example would be just to take a look at a, a common, maybe assignment that a teacher would give okay. to okay. a student. Mm -hmm. um, let's say there's the state report. I think those happen around fourth grade. Oh, and yeah. a student needs to um, write a report on what um, 
all the great things about a particular state. So mm -hmm. um, in thinking about the cognitive strategies, whether it's social studies or science or reading, um, students de definitely need to start demonstrating that independence, being mm -hmm. able to get started on that research um, on their own and kind of have a framework, maybe use some graphic organizers, whatever you'd want to sure. do to get started. Um, and building that um, strong research base. So we're starting to look at, there's, you don't just have one resource, you look at sure. more than one resource. Um, one of the things that I think is interesting that in, in the language arts is that it's not just um, what I write, but it's also how I listen to other people and how I speak. And so I need to definitely know who my audience is going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, some teachers will have kids come and present to a group of kindergartners, and that's much different than if it's a grandparents' day and there's going to be a, a presentation. And right. So well, knowing and even, your audience. And even thinking about the kind of presentation you're going to provide. Are there going to be visuals? or images that you provide or graphs mm -hmm. or anything like that. So being able to put that information together to develop that content will be important for students to be able to do. And that's going to be, be different based on what they, the final product is, needs to be. So, right. Um, one of the things I think too that kids often have tr trouble with is, is being able to critique their own work. And, uh, you know, many times we just write out whatever we find, but mm -hmm. being able to critique that and say, well, you know, there's a discrepancy here between these two resources. Mm -hmm. So being able to comprehend and critique that work, understanding whether or not um, what they have written really is making sense to the reader. Um, of course, technology, we need to make sure that we're using the technology, digital media, in communicating those final products. I think one of the things that, uh, that we need to make sure we... Um, work on too is just understanding other people's perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes when kids are working in groups, and we touched on this in the mathematics um, yes. strategies as well, working in groups we just need to understand where the other person's coming from and we can do that through our reading but we can also doing, do that by just working with another uh, member from our, our, our class. And so understanding those other perspectives are going to be real important well, as and well. That is, that is such a, to me, that's such a college and career ready opportunity for kids to really experience that because in our world, I mean, just like you and I, we're colleagues and we work with so many different people right. in our staff and in amongst others. We're constantly working with people all the time and sharing resources and ideas, and that's that's what we want kids to be mm -hmm. doing. And so many times I think that teachers feel like that's a classroom management piece that they really have a struggle with undertaking, but mm -hmm. I think that um, through the Common Core, this, this cognitive strategy specifically, I think will really help prepare students down the road. I agree, I agree. Um, one of the things, I think I kind of hinted at this a little bit, is that um, by using the example of a social studies state report, uh -huh. that we no longer are going to be looking at reading skills being taught by reading teachers. Um, oh, it looks a lot different now, lot doesn't different, it? a lot different. So all of us as educators are going to have to take a role, if you will, in developing these strategies in our own content area. Right. And so it'll be a great way for you and I or a bunch of teachers to collaborate and come together to the table and share ways in which we're going to do just that. Right. And the teaching I think will be stronger in every classroom because we'll be looking at strategies that we all can share. The kids will be hearing it more than one time um, and they'll notice that this is the way we approach this type of work. Mm -hmm. this, this type of reading rather than this is just the way this teacher does it. Um, and so I think that'll be helpful um, when teachers come together and have those conversations about that. Mm -hmm.